For the headlines, the weather forecast. Pagasa reports that 13 to 18 tropical cyclones are expected to enter the par this year. Local news: Police officer to be charged by Pedea 10 for shabu seizure in CDO. Drugs worth 1.2 million seized in PNP joint operation in the northern Mindanao region. Alcimer. 18.6 million pesos in personal property damages from the fire in Lapasan. City government welcomes courts favorable WPI ruling against water cut off. National news. Quiet but still dangerous. PVOX warns Kanlaon may still erupt. LTFRB to unconsolidated PUJs. Call off the planned three day transport strike. International news. A massive black cloud passes over South Africa. Entertainment. What the Huan's frontman Carl Guevara learned from the especially for you experience. At 52, Nadia Montenegro has become a Navy reservist. Sports. Filipino athletes bound for the Olympics to receive cash incentives prior to the Paris Games. Fencer Maxine Esteban expresses pride in representing both the Philippines and Ivory Coast at the Paris Olympics. International feature. Sabrina Carpenter's upcoming album, Short and Sweet, is set to be released on August 23rd. National feature. Amazing Aspins, introducing the charming and talented Barako family. Good morning Philippines, Maganda umaga Luzon, ug mayo adlaw Visayas ug Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, June 5, 2024. I am Athalia Pisaniel. Weather forecast. Pag-asa reports that 13 to 18 tropical cyclones are expected to enter the part this year. According to the Philippine State Weather Bureau Pag-asa, Approximately 13 to 18 tropical cyclones are forecasted to affect the country this year. A number below the usual annu annual average of 19 to 20 typhoons. Last year saw fewer cyclones with only 11 attributed to the El Nino phenomenon. While the rainy season has begun, some regions may still experience hot weather due to the lingering effects of El Nino particularly in parts of the Visayas, Mindanao, and Metro Manila. However, as temperatures rise in the early afternoon, convective clouds form leading to afternoon rains. Looking ahead, La Nina is expected to influence the country from the third quarter of 2024 into the following year, with a peak in the latter part of the year and potentially extending into the first quarter of the next year. Local News Police officer to be charged by PDEA 10 for Shabu seizure in CDO. Today, an, an active police officer was apprehended by the PDEA Misamis Oriental Provincial Team inside his residence in Upper Barangay Lumbia, the city, on another occasion of violating the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. This was disclosed by PDEA 10 Regional Director Attorney Benjamin Gaspi, providing further details about the arrest of police staff Sergeant Santiago Lumancas, who is of legal age and currently assigned as an assistant investigator at Inita Police Municipal Station in Misamis Oriental. Gaspi stated that the basis for filing charges against the active police officer is the estimated 110 grams of suspected shabu, 
valued at over 700,000 pesos, seized during yesterday morning's operation. Additionally, Gaspi mentioned that they are currently investigating whether the firearms confiscated by the PIDEA raiding team have legitimate documentation in coordination with the police regional office 10. The suspect was previously arrested by PIDEA 10 in 2013 at his residence in Barangay Makasandig but was released by the court due to the loss of evidence caused by the fire incident at the Hall of Justice in the city in January 2015. Drugs worth 1.2 million pesos seized in PNP joint operation in the northern Mindanao region. More than 1.2 million pesos worth of suspected illegal drugs and other contraband were seized from nearly 90 suspected law violators in various parts of northern Mindanao, resulting in police intervention. This concerted effort is part of the rigorous enforcement of various laws, including those against illegal drugs, illegal firearms, possession, crackdown on legal gambling activities, and apprehension of long-standing wanted individuals in the region. The Police Regional Office 10 disclosed that in their anti-illegal drugs operations, their lower units apprehended 60 suspected drug pushers, resulting in the confiscation of 184.424 grams of shabu and 5.12 grams of marijuana. Furthermore, 23 individuals involved in illegal gambling were also arrested, with more than 3 million pesos worth of gambling and items confiscated. Additionally, around 70 individuals with various criminal cases, including six most wanted persons and 61 other wanted individuals, were apprehended by the PNP lower units. Camp Alagar also recorded the confiscation of various firearms from three apprehended individuals, while 19 firearms were voluntarily surrendered for safekeeping. Oximer 18.6 million in personal property damages from the fire in Lapasan. In Cagayan de Oro City, it was reported that personal damages amounting to over 18.6 million pesos were incurred by the occupants of 42 housing, 76 families, or 303 individuals in Zone 6, San Lazaro, Barangay Lapasan, in the city. This is based on the gathered data from Lapasan Barangay Captain Julito Lit Lit. Oximer through the damage assessment conducted by his team. Oximer stated that they are using this as a basis for providing minimal financial assistance from the Barangay Standby Calamity Fund. They also intend to relay this information to the City Hall to facilitate possible assistance to the victims. Meanwhile, the Barangay Council is still seeking additional aid for the affected families of the tragedy. The structural damage estimated by the Bureau of Fire Protection amounts to around 6 million pesos, while the investigation into the cause of the fire is still pending. City government welcomes court's favorable WPI ruling against water cutoff. City Mayor Rolando Clarix Uy expressed satisfaction as a serving water private petitioner successfully convinced the court to block Metro Pacific Water Cagayan de Oro Bok Water Incorporated or Metro Pak Kobe from further cutting off the city's water supply. This came after the petitioners obtained a writ of preliminary injunction. The new spokesperson for Mayor Uy, Jan Boy Aktub, emphasized the significant relief the court's ruling brings to the public's concern. Meanwhile, Metro Pacific Water Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated side only viewed the favorable decision obtained by the water petitioners from the court as baseless since they have no plans to cut off water supply to COWD again. On the other hand, regular board of director Dr. Jerry Cano expressed confidence that the excessive charges for water consumption will cease once the un unity meeting is held under the initiative of Community Alliance on Water Security Action or CAUSA and with the agreement of Cagayan de Oro Water District Interim General Manager Fermin Harales alongside other city stakeholders.
Kanyo noted, however, that they have yet to receive a copy of the invitation from Harales. Nonetheless, if given the chance to attend the regular COWD boards meeting, they will first recommend to Metro Park Waters Kobe to halt their imposition of high waters rates in the city, including the alleged illegal imposition of high interests on their charges, which COWD incurred due to debt issues.
National News Quiet but still dangerous. PVOX warns can laon may still erupt. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology warned on Tuesday that despite Mount Canlaon's current seemingly calm state, another eruption remains a possibility. Mariton Bornas, PVOX Chief Science Research Specialist, mentioned that the volcano is quietly degasing and experiencing weak low-frequency volcanic earthquakes as of Tuesday. She emphasized that Canlaon's behavior can suddenly turn violent without any precursor activity, with the likelihood of experiencing phreatic or similar explosive events. Bornas highlighted the volcano's dangerous nature, noting its last magmatic eruption occurred 122 years ago. PVOX raised the alert level for Canlaon from 1 to 2 indicating unrest and warning of possible more explosive eruptions. Dr. Maria Maylin Villegas, PVOX Deputy Director, emphasized the need to maintain a safe distance from the 4-kilometer danger zone around the volcano. Bornas also warned of potential lava flows affecting communities, especially in the southern areas, once a magmatic eruption occurs. As of Tuesday, PVOX has not recorded any succeeding eruptions in Mount Canlaon since Monday evening. LTFRB to unconsolidated PUJs call off the planned three-day transport strike. LTFRB Chairman Attorney Teofilio Guadis III urged operators and drivers of unconsolidated public utility jeepneys to cancel their planned three-day transportation strike scheduled for June 10 to 12. Guadis emphasized that all unconsolidated PUJs are considered colorum at, after the consolidation deadline expired on April 30. He warned that those who participate in the strike may face charges, particularly if they inconvenience the public, as if it would constitute public disturbance. Guadis stated that while proposals to extend the provisional authority of single pr franchise jeepney operators were discussed in Congressional hearings. No decision has been made yet regarding the gradual phase out of jeepneys. The LTFRB assured commuters that there would be sufficient public transportation during the strike and that they are prepared to deploy free rides. International news A massive black cloud passes over South Africa. On Monday, a driver near Durban in South Africa captured footage of what he described as, lar as a large, dark cloud resembling a tornado, accompanied by debris swirling around it. Trevor Fremantle, the person who filmed the video, recounted witnessing the uh, ominous cloud moving from the west towards the east, reminiscent of a tornado scene from a movie. He noted that the cloud's darkness was even more pronounced in person and his, vehicle, and his vehicle was affected by strong winds. After the cloud passed, Fremantle observed, Fremantle observed damaged vehicles, including a truck overturned, broken trees, and signs of severe weather. While tornadoes are rare in South Africa, the incident was confirmed by matching landmarks in the footage with the street view imagery, and local authorities reported severe weather conditions in the area. The video's authenticity was verified using original file metadata from the source. Entertainment what the Juan's frontman Carl Guevara learned from the Especially For You experience. OPM band The Juan's lead vocalist and keyboardist Carl Guevara reflected on his experience from the Especially For You dating segment on its showtime last April, where he remained single after his date Andrea pursued her dreams overseas. 
Despite enjoying their time together, Guevara emphasized the importance of prioritizing dreams over romantic pursuits and expressed support for Andrea's aspirations. He also thanked Vice Ganda for the opportunity and acknowledged the overwhelming love and support he received from fans following the show. Guevara hopes to set an example for viewers that experiencing heartbreak is normal but should not justify hurting others, emphasizing responsible handling of pain and relationships. At 52, Nadia Montenegro has become a Navy reservist. Veteran actress Nadia Montenegro, known as Nadine M. Pla in real life, has joined the Philippine Navy as a reserve following the completion of a brief training course. Alongside 45 newly graduated Army reservists, she finished a 30-day training program attended by Philippine Navy Generals and Senator Robin Padilla as a guest of honor. Montenegro expressed overwhelming pride and gratitude for the opportunity, citing Senator Padilla's patriotism as a motivating factor for her decision to join the Navy. Reflecting on her training experience, she emphasized the lessons in patience, self-discovery, and pushing personal limits, underscoring the importance of determination and service to the country. Montenegro also extended her heartfelt appreciation to her family, particularly her supportive children, for their unwavering support throughout her journey. Sports. Filipino athletes bound for the Olympics to receive cash incentives prior to the Paris Games. The Philippines' representatives for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games are slated to receive cash incentives before the event. As revealed by Philippine Sports Commission Chairman Richard Batchman during the Philippine Sports Writers Association Forum at the Rizal Memorial Sports Complex. The incentives, totaling around 30 plus million pesos, include contributions from Senator Riza Hontiveros and additional funds from other senators, directly allocated to the athletes through the PSC. Currently, 15 Filipino athletes have secured spots in the Paris Games, with expectations of four more by the end of June, according to the Philippine Olympic Committee President Abraham Tolentino. The PSC has remarked 52 million pesos for the Paris Olympics, covering various expenses such as preparations, training, participation costs, airfare, and uniforms. Additionally, plans for constructing a seven-story athlete's dormitory within the RMSC are underway, with demolition scheduled for July and groundbreaking in August. The project is estimated to take at least two years to complete. Spencer Maxine Esteban expresses pride in representing both the Philippines and Ivory Coast at the Paris Olympics. Maxine Esteban remains proudly Filipino despite her switch to representing Cote d'Ivoire in fencing. She emphasizes that she will be representing both countries at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Esteban, who secured her spot at the Olympics during the 2024 Absolute Fencing Gear FIE for the Grand Prix in the U.S., expressed gratitude for the ongoing support she receives from the Filipinos and stressed her Filipino identity. Currently based in Germany for, for training, she is gearing up for the Paris Games, including participation in various competitions and training camps. Esteban also expressed excitement at the prospect of facing childhood friend Sam Katantan on the fencing strip, hoping it would be in the later stages of the competition. International feature Sabrina Carpenter's upcoming album Short and Sweet is set to be released on August 23rd. American vocalist Sabrina Carpenter revealed on Tuesday her plans to launch her upcoming album this year. 
titled Short and Sweet, Carpenter announced that the album will be officially released on August 23. While details about potential singles preceding the album's release remain unconfirmed. Carpenter, known for her background as a Disney actress, ventured into music in 2014. Her previous album, Emails I Can't Send, released in 2022, garnered global acclaim with tracks like Feather and Nonsense, gaining popularity on TikTok. Carpenter's recent release, Expresso, soared to success on Spotify, topping the platform's charts. National feature, Amazing Aspins, introducing the charming and talented Baracko family. Regarded as humans' most loyal companions, dogs, particularly Aspins for native Philippine dogs, exhibit inherent sweetness and loyalty to their owners. Through proper care, affection, and training, they can further develop their discipline and intelligence, as exemplified by Baracko and his siblings. The Baracko family, boasting 546,000 followers on Facebook, spreads positivity on social media by showcasing the remarkable tricks and endearing qualities for their 17 Aspins, owned by 48-year-old Fernando Boat Jr. and his wife. Both share that their first canine family member, Lola Milky, lived for 13 years and was their initial training subject. However, it was during the pandemic that both found ample time to train Baracko, who learned gestures like mano and other tricks, earning admiration from online users. Ensuring the well-being of their fur babies, the family provides them with love, care, and necessary resources, even choosing to keep them inside their home for comfort and protection. They also emphasize responsible pet ownership by neutering some of their male dogs and advocating for the appreciation of all dog breeds, regardless of their origin. Both encourages everyone to love their pets unconditionally and to understand their behavior with patience, emphasizing the local dogs like Aspins deserve love and respect. Attention Pinoy Rob News viewers, we want to bring to your attention a concerning trend involving an increase in teen suicides, both in the US and globally, linked to a mobile phone virus known as Pegasus. Scammers are exploiting individuals by sending deceptive emails where they spoof the recipient's own email address to make it appear as though the message is from themselves. They then claim to possess compromising images or videos of the victim engaged in inappropriate activities. Some scammers demand money, while others make victims send explicit material of themselves. However, once the victim sends self-created explicit content, the scammers use it to manipulate and exploit the victim further leading the devastating consequences, including instances of suicide. We believe it's essential to spread awareness about the malicious scam to protect individuals from falling victim to it. Please share this important message with your friends and family to help prevent further harm. For additional information and resources, please visit usnorton.com. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Pinoy Rob News Team. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on News Channel. And thank you very much for listening and watching Pinoy Rob News Channel, Kagayan de Oro. And please support and subscribe Pinoy Rob News Channel, Kagayan de Oro. And I request once more to support and subscribe and turn on notification for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.
Yeah.